YouTube, what is up? We are back with another day. Uh, just finished up League Night nice Softball. We had early games today, so 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Just finished up. It's 8.09 right now p.m. We'll get to the gym in 10 minutes here. We got softball tournament tomorrow, a big tournament, Dudley Classic tomorrow. Uh, if we win, it's like 12 monster bats, 12 new bats for the team, for the boys. Um, and I've been breaking some bats recently, so uh, it'd be nice to win that tournament. Balled out tonight. Really feeling that that pole cut swing, dude. It, it's down right now. We were supposed to. Uh, one guy told me that we were recording the games, and then he checked his phone and it wasn't recording, which is really unfortunate because I probably had some of my favorite swings ever tonight. Um, things were clicking. But today we're going to go to the gym, 8.09. I probably want to be out of the gym right around 9.30, 10-ish, just so I can get to bed and... Um, Get to bed and uh, get ready for BP tomorrow. Get ready for the tournament tomorrow without uh, being here too late and crushing a leg. So we're going to hit snatches. I know I want to crush some snatches. And then maybe some single arm deadlifts or something a little bit lighter. I'm not going to go a ton of volume today. Those lunges super fucked me up on Tuesday. Um, but we're getting back into four days a week. I've been on top of my shit this week, which has been nice. Feeling a lot more productive this week. The shit goals uh, is going away, dude. I'm telling you, the last two, three weeks, I felt like absolute death. And I, I could not figure out what it was. I thought, I mean, sometimes I just go through um, just periods where like the energy isn't super great. I thought it was just one of those. And then that shingles popped up. And it's nice to know that that is going away. And we are back alive, getting after it again. So we're going to go rip some snatches and then single arm deads and then kind of see maybe maybe work something. I did a ton of calves and like isos yesterday, so calves are a little sore, but probably won't have a ton of volume on anything today. But um, I really want to hit a good snatch session today and uh, feel an explosive softball was flying today. So hopefully the, the snatch bar is flying or we could get there and the snatch bar could absolutely body us. We never know. But um, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Let's get it. All right, so finished a couple warm ups. We were doing some uh, jump shrugs with it into a muscle, muscle. Muscle snatch, muscle snatch. Why was I saying muscle shrug? Uh, we did some jumps into a muscle shrug, muscle snatch. Oh my God, jumps into muscle snatches, into um, some full snatches just to work on that depth. The fucking, the glutes and amines are still on fire from those lunges. Getting in that deep position on fire right now. But we're gonna hit some hangs now. Sets of three, sets of one, same thing. We've been kind of ripping. Um, the bar is moving nice. The bar feels good. Feels like I'm attacking it pretty well. Um, but those glutes, if I had to start get into that squat position, I'm going to be in a world of pain. I'm going to be crying on camera. Um, so hopefully we can just throw that bar up there like it's nothing and stay out of there. But we're going to end up going into that hole and uh, getting after it. But we got three of them here. Let's get it. I uh, took the other two, so I have four milligram nicotine gum. I took two milligrams for the game and two milligrams right now, and my head is fucking spinning. I'm a lightweight when it comes to nicotine. Um, really does help focus on a ball, dude. Softball, it's, it's just like such a good buzz to be able to like focus on the ball and get through it. But oh my goodness, that, that four milligrams in like three hours is way too much for me. I know guys that have, I saw a dude at softball the other day that he had a 16 milligram pouch. I was like, Jesus Christ, dude, I'd be throwing up on the ground. But we got two milligrams in the mouth right now, feeling kind of locked in there. Um, these are feeling good. And I think we're just, we're just gonna keep ripping. Let's get it. Oof. Let's go. I finally pulled the trigger and got uh, three batteries for the camera. Unbelievably helpful. The camera, the battery that came with the camera, it kind of dies like within an hour. So anything I record that's over an hour, uh, or like if I record two things in a day, it kind of dies. But I went on Amazon, bought two batteries uh, that have a charging port with it, dude. And it's like these two batteries, each battery individually lasts like two to three hours themselves. So. Upgraded the batteries, we're liking that. Upgraded the SD card so I don't forget the SD card. And uh, hopefully we kind of crush this YouTube uh, thing. We continue to crush it. And that's probably uh, something worth talking about. Um, I think one of the best ways to make your program and make yourself seem way fucking smarter than you actually are um, is add a aura of mystery around your program. And you see this with a lot of 
I don't want to say high figure coaches because I think once you hit a certain point, it's either you turn into a charlatan or you turn into somebody that actually knows what the fuck you're talking about. But you see a lot of coaches where it's like they'll shit on a lot of other coaches or they'll shit on a lot of the knowledge that other coaches have put out there or pick and part certain things that coaches have said in like the hours and hours and hours of video and content and podcasts that these coaches have put out. And you go to their page and all they got is 10 second reels, right? Or uh, a bunch of tweets on their page, right? Where they don't really have to explain anything. They can kind of be Ori and you, can, you like have this aura about them that they're mysterious and way fucking smarter than they are. Um, and I think it's a really good sign to show like does a coach, is there actually depth to that coach, right? Are they putting out long form content? Are they putting out content where they actually have to discuss these ideas and work on these ideas on the fly? Now, you can go the other end and you can like, being able to express your message openly, verbally, in long form content, does not mean that you automatically know what the fuck you're talking about, right? You can go all the way to the Ben Patrick route where he's just phenomenal at short form and long form content. He's able to speak, he's a politician, like a lot of politicians. Like, doesn't mean it's necessarily something there, but I think a lot of coaches take the other end of that, the super easy way out, and Joachim Strang's definitely been there before, like at the start for sure, where it's literally like, if you just have some aura and some mystery about you, people think you know way more than you actually do. Um, so I think it's a, I want a challenge for coaches, but also just like, what should you look for in a coach? It's like, if you want to know if, they, if there's actual depth there, go to something long form with them. And you, you see a lot of coaches and a lot of uh, programs fall apart whenever they hop on long form content, or they just don't do it and they stay away from it. And then they shit on other coaches that are doing long form content. It's kind of hilarious, but it's just one of those things. It's like, it's like if you're going to enter into the arena, like enter into the fucking arena and like actually put your ideas to test out there and, and build up the ability to speak in front of the camera. That's it's a massive step in, I think, any coaches or any content creators like journey is at some point the short form doesn't fucking matter anymore. People stop caring about the short form and they see through it, right? Um, or you create the little cult that they only care about like, oh, there's a mystery there. There's something mysterious on this program. I should be a part of it. And then you enter into it. You're like, oh, there's really nothing much here. It's fucking, it's a West Side program, right? So I think go develop those abilities. Go to develop the abilities to speak and put your ideas out there and work on that in the long form content and then see if it holds up. And if at the end of the day, it doesn't work out in the long form content, you became a much better speaker, right? You became the, you, you developed the ability to work on these ideas long form and adjust your ideas on the fly, right? Like it puts your ideas to the test much like, you get your pen and your, your Instagram abilities up enough, you can kind of make any idea seem super fucking genius. I can type and I, I'm, I don't want to sound like a, an asshole here, but like I'm a good writer. I, I can write and I can write in a way in which all of my ideas sound fucking amazing. Can you take that next step? Can you put that idea into like verbal words, into a long form and actually express and go into details about that idea? And I think a lot of coaches can't. And I think their defense to not being able to do that is just continually in the short form content and continually point out coaches that are actually in the fucking arena. So if you're not in the arena, you don't get to point out some of this stuff, right? Stay in your little short form game and continue to play that game. It's just, it just kind of drives me nuts when uh, it's just a lot of these, it's like this edgy coaching way of doing things. It's like, you're not actually putting out any real content. You're putting out a bunch of tweets um, and writing a bunch of shit that you can make sound great when you write it. But can you actually express that idea when you get into a long form uh, content or, uh, or video or anything like that? So um, last set of three here and then we'll go from there. Let's go. And I think that idea of like putting out long form content and working on the ability to speak and communicate your message in the long form thing is kind of in the same sense of like training for the sake of training. Like not snatching to, for the, the, the benefits of the sport, not snatching for all of these reasons of why it transfers to the sport. That doesn't negate the fact that snatching can transfer to sport, doesn't negate that lifting can transfer to sport. I just think once you get to a certain point, it kind of burns you out and you realize it doesn't transfer as much as you'd like. And then you start getting nihilistic about training when you could just train for the sake of training. Like I'm gonna train for the snake of snatching. I have a goal separate of my sport to snatch with. I want to hit 225 snatch. Not because I think it's going to make me a, an amazing softball player. I think any sort of training can kind of do that. I think it's just a solid goal for me to bring intensity to the training. And I think long form videos can be the same way. It's like, why do you keep making these YouTube videos if they get 200 views? And some are doing good, some are doing bad. It's like, what's, what's the massive benefit there? It's like, because it's not making the video to go viral. It's not making the video to 
make a bunch of money instantly, right? It's this long-term game, right, of developing these skill sets that I don't currently have, which is speaking in front of a camera, having something to talk about. That's one of the hardest things, especially if I uh, like didn't sleep well the night before or didn't read or was just had a super busy day. It's like, what do you talk about on camera? It's tough to talk about something every single day. So the creation of, ide of ideas, bringing these ideas to life, but it's developing those skill sets for the long-term game, right? So by the time I'm 50, by the time I'm at a point where I have a family and I have a little bit more leverage in things that I'm doing and maybe I'm in a different field, I work on things, I have the ability to communicate these messages. I've gotten thousands and thousands and years and years of reps just talking to a camera because I started for the sake of talking to the camera, for the sake of developing these skill sets, not for the sake of going viral, not for the sake of becoming a big time strength coach. Like, I really don't care about that. That's a byproduct, right, of becoming a good speaker, becoming an interesting person, becoming strong, right? So I think doing things for the sake of doing them, making videos for the sake of making the video and developing those skill sets rather than looking for this transfer of um, it needs to be specific, right? The best thing in the world for making a lot of money right now is a ton of short form content that you don't explain a lot and it's super eye grabbing, right? Um, but that's right now in the moment. And that's not to say you negate the things that get you ahead in life in the moment. I'm not saying negate the short form content. I use the short form content already. Like you should use the things that are working right now, but play also the long term game while you're doing it and work on some of these long form contents to. Um, hopefully take you where you want to go eventually, not just taking a care of the moment, right? Some point Instagram's gonna die, right? Just like MySpace. Some points, um, all of these uh, short form reels, like it's, it's not gonna be cool anymore. People are gonna crave something deeper. And then are you ready? Have you prepared yourself for those moments? Or are you just a charlatan that can put out a bunch of tweets um, coming at everybody, right? I don't think that's the way to go. So here we go. Singles here. Since we kind of got the gym to ourselves here too, and the snatches are feeling good, and we're feeling a little bit fired up from the nicotine, uh, another thing that really, really ruffles my feathers is this super low IQ take of people saying you shit on Ben Patrick for clout and for money and for gains. I see this take, I've seen this take probably seven or eight times throughout the last week. And my favorite thing about the take is these uh, coaches will post a uh, infographic or a reel or something along the lines of stop calling out Ben Patrick for uh, the sake of calling him out like you're coattailing on Ben Patrick and you're gaining followers through that method while using a picture of Ben Patrick. Like they are coattailing, they are using his brand to appeal to Ben Patrick or appeal to the crowd that's, oh, just be nice to everybody. And a lot of times it's people that were anti-Ben Patrick, but now it's not cool to be anti-Ben Patrick. So they're going against their own word because now it's the edgy thing to say now is, oh, we're on Ben Patrick's side or it's not cool to shit on Ben Patrick. Just such a low IQ take. Like you are, you are doing the same thing, first off, that you are calling out. Like you're using a picture of Ben Patrick. As soon as people see Ben Patrick, they're gonna use, it's very, uh, it's a very, um, polarizing figure so you're still coattailing off Ben Patrick you're doing the exact thing that you're trying to call out and like virtue signal with and it's just in such a low IQ take because the number one way to gain followers the number one way to make a lot of money the number one way to get views to your profile would be to side with Ben Patrick his following is 2.4 million people on Instagram you post anything with Ben Patrick that sides with it and you get 4 million comments saying, oh my God, Ben saved me. It's the best thing in the world. ATG, and they all have ATG level one in their like, bio. But like, if you're gonna try and boost the algorithm, you would decide with Ben Patrick. The best way for me to get a lot of views to my account right now is to go do the podcast with Ben Patrick. To go do the podcast where he said he's not interested in debating. He's just interested in listing his, like, he basically just wants to come on and say how great ATG is and then lead the podcast. It wouldn't be a debate style. But the number one way to get a lot of followers is to put Ben Patrick on my podcast, put Ben Patrick on YouTube and side with him or do the things that he wants to do. And he knows that. Like, when you have 2.4 million followers, you don't get that by accident, right? That, that's a very smart person that knows how to work the marketing side of things. But this, it's just such a crazy low IQ take. It's like, the, the number one way is not to go against him. You lose money when you go against Ben Patrick. The easiest people to sell to in the world are ATGers. They have, they have fallen for an ATG program, right? They can fall for my program if I market it in the right way, right? Like these people are obviously very easily sold on things, very easily sold there on out their ideas, very easily sold there on being edgy. And the easiest way to do it and, and make money and grow your page would be to side with them. So it's, it's such an unbelievably low IQ take for two reasons. Uh, but my favorite one is just looking at the, the ultimate paradox of they are using Ben Patrick's image while getting mad about people using Ben Patrick's image. Like, 
how fucking stupid can you get? It drives me insane, dude. I, I just, and then, and then people fall for it in the comments, too. That's what drives me nuts. It's this weird fucking virtue signal from edgy coaches of like, oh, it's not cool to hate on him anymore. It's not cool to point out bullshit training, which is fucking unbelievable. It's like, just because people have said things are bad, but the things that are bad continually happen doesn't mean you stop talking about that subject. Like, fucking crazy. You never just stop talking about bad things. Like, it, it's nuts. You stop talking about them when the issue is fixed. The issue is not fixed with Ben Patrick. The issue is not fixed with ATGers. There are more and more of them every single day. So that's unfucking real that people are like saying that in the first place. But then people fall for the virtue signal. It's like, oh, you're such a kind coach. Oh, you're so thoughtful. You just put out your own content. No, you don't. Every single one of the coaches putting that stuff out there has also hated on other programs. Like, I mean, Atlas is a great example. Atlas doesn't like squat you. Ben Patrick is squat you, bro. It's the same fucking thing. Like, it, it, it's, it's unbelievable. So it's like, you can't just not, you can't just pick that side because now it's not edgy, right? Like, I just think that's the ultimate, like, edge warrior thought process. Like, you're literally just doing things to go against the, the mainstream so you continue to stay relevant. Not Atlas. I don't think Atlas is doing that to continue to stay relevant. Uh, I, th I just don't like his disconnect between Squat You and, like, Ben Patrick. It's the same fucking people. But, um, or expert marketers. But, like, the, the edge lords out there that try to like, oh, it's just these people are doing, it's like, dude, you are being an edge lord doing that. You're literally just going against wherever the, fit, wherever the fitness world goes, you try to go against just to say you are different than these people. That's not, that's not a deep thought process. It doesn't make you virtuous. It doesn't make you kind. When a stupid idea is a stupid idea, you can call it out. When there's bad, bad business practices, when there's athletes that aren't getting results and are getting hurt from this stuff, like, it's okay to call that out. You're not a bad person for calling that out. And just because it annoys a strength coach, that doesn't make it not right to call it out. Like it, it's wild, it drives me nuts, ruffles my feathers. Hopefully we can put some of that uh, anger into, uh, into this bar. Here we go. There we go. Woo! Let's go. Damn, dude, 185 is such a barrier for me. As soon as I get the 185, it just feels like that's so fucking heavy. Well, I'll put like 2.5s on and then a five on, but God, dude, every time it just feels like everything falls apart when I hit 185. It's like my little breaking point. Maybe it's mental. Other thing that uh, ruffles my feathers recently, and I've been talking to Atlas about this, this isn't a secret, but his, Atlas's whole argument that you just hate on tib raises, the hate on tib raises, uh, and they're super helpful. Like for shin high, or calf hypertrophy, right? Like, and I made a post about this, uh, go check it out. But it's like, dude, first off, nobody in ATG is selling shin raises for calf hypertrophy, not a single one. There, there's every single one, it's knee pain, it's gonna fix your ankles, and most, most of it's knee pain, obviously, like knees over toes, but everything is, it's gonna cure this magic issue. Not a single one is saying, if you do this, your shins are gonna look good. Nobody is selling it on it, nobody is saying that, right? So that's a make-believe argument. Two. You want athletic looking calves, you want aesthetically pleasing calves, go do fucking athletic things. Go jump, sprint. Like, I have fucking great calves, right? Obviously part of that's genetics, right? But like, I have good calves. It's, it's the one body part you can't fucking sit there and argue and virtue signal about like hypertrophy responses. Like, I beat 95% of the world in calf raises and how calves look, right? And that is no, like, I'm not focused on my calves. I don't think it's a really cool thing. Honestly, I think really athletic calves are super skinny and they're super veiny. Um, and they don't look like you're doing shin raises or calf raises, right? I think that's like the tendon does a lot of work. That's a little theory that I was working on. I have no idea if there's validity there, but I was like, big calves to me, tell me that you don't use your Achilles. Like when, I, when I'm doing it, like I never feel my Achilles doing anything. I'm not a springy person. Um, I'm an ox. I like to push and like I'm strong there, but that the calf muscle has to take over. That's why it's big. Um, but I just think it's such a silly non-secular argument. It's like one, nobody's doing shin raises. And nobody's talking about selling raises, uh, shin raises for fucking calf development. Not a single one of them. They're all making these absurd claims. Two, if I'm gonna go get my calves looking big, like I'm gonna go do a calf exercise, hit some calf raises, hit some seated calf raises. Um, and if I want athletic looking calves, I'm gonna go do athletic things, right? Like jumping and sprinting. There's no way you can tell me that your calf is gonna get more developed doing this motion than doing a jump, a pogo, like landing on them, doing it like sprinting. Dude, one sprint is gonna give you more calf stimulus than any shin raise as well. It's just, it's just such a weird argument. And again, I don't even care about the tib raises specifically. If that's all it was, like just arguing tib raises 
or not, I wouldn't care. But it, it's this random argument that Tib raises are going to, like, it's the lie around Tib raises and then Atlas turning that into some weird hypertrophy argument. It's, it's silly, dude. Nobody's arguing for that. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a silly argument because if you want athletic calves, go do athletic things. Stop trying to build those in the weight room. If you're going to build them in the weight room, just like if you want to build a big chest, you would do chest exercises. You're not going to row a bunch of volume, right? Obviously, rowing is a part of like a holistic, functional program, um, and having a big back is great. I'm not shitting on rowing, but like if you want a big chest, you're not going to build that up by doing a bunch of rows in the same way that you're not going to build up big calves doing fucking shin raises. It, such a weird argument, dude. Ruff, ruffled the feathers today, man. We're ruffled. All right, let's get this weight. Let's go. Oh, yeah, that was clean. Holy fuck. Dude, I need to, like, punch that bar up. Holy shit. That's just not good looking. I'm not getting that lockout position very well. Um, let's do one more set, and then we'll go to something else, because that was kind of icky. But hopefully the next one doesn't look as icky. Good fight though, I'll give myself that. We're gonna do the same weight, hopefully make it look just a little bit cleaner. And if we do make it look cleaner, then we'll go to fives. But if not, we'll just count it after, after this one. If it looks as gross as that last one. I, I looked at the video, I mean, I got the bar up there. It's just that, that dude, that lockout position, it's just super goofy for me. We'll get it down, we're getting process here. We'll keep working on it. Let's get it. Ah! Not nah, super clean. We'll call it there. Feeling solid. Pull feels good. Stick in position just feels like dick. Uh, I need to get after just a little bit more with these snatches, dude. Just gotta break through that barrier here pretty soon. It'll happen. Since we didn't have a ton of volume there and we're not gonna hit a super heavy secondary lift, we're just gonna do single arm deadlifts there. I mean, we'll go heavy on the single arm deadlifts, but it's not like a full max out squat, just to save the legs a little bit for tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna hit extra volume here. So we're gonna pull from the blocks. We got three sets of three here, just getting underneath the bar. Um, I know Will doesn't, Will and Brandon Cardi don't really love lighter snatches, um, but I feel like I get a way different stimulus out of the lighter snatches versus heavy snatches, and I think it's just because my technique is so shit when it gets to heavy snatches that I don't get that same pulley feeling. Uh, when I do light, light for me, I mean, it's still probably like 70, 80-ish percent, so I guess it's probably not light necessarily, but anyways, um, they, they're kind of against that bar speed argument, um, but I like the feel of lighter snatches, and again, don't take my fucking word for it. I'm not a great Olympic lifter. Probably take the good Olympic lifters feel, but just what I feel from snatches is I feel super athletic and explosive when I'm doing lighter snatches and like I'm getting what I'm supposed to get out of snatches with that triple extension and being able to snap through and just being explosive with the bar. Um, and when I get heavier, it really just feels into kind of a meathead lift, which again, isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, there's time and place for that. And I think a big part of the reason why is because my technique falls apart so much when it gets heavy, but I do like lighter snatches for myself. Um, and we're going to hit some sets here. So let's get it. Three sets of three. <clears throat> and on the uh, differing, in quotations, opinions from Will and Brandon on the lighter snatches versus not lighter snatches, again, I know there's a lot of nuance there, they're probably not super against it, but just in general, like when a coach says something and you, when you do that exercise or they say that philosophy isn't perfect or this way of squatting isn't right, this way of snatching isn't right. Doesn't mean you just have to totally just absorb the world. You should listen to people that you respect and they've probably been through like, again, Will snatch is like 400 fucking pounds. I should probably listen to a couple things that he says uh, on the way to snatching. But that doesn't mean you have to like throw out everything that you're feeling and seeing and living and breathing in real life. Uh, if, if you like a certain exercise, you're light in a certain thing and a certain coach shits on it, it's like, okay, you don't have to just totally change your program. If you're feeling something there, again, that doesn't mean everything works. I'm kind of against that thought process. I think that's a little too general. They are good and there is bad, right? But in the moment, if it's working for you, everything can work in a certain time or for a certain reason for somebody. You can justify anything. Again, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go out there and talk, preach the importance of light snatches, right? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying for me personally, like when I do them, I feel something good, so I like doing them, right? Um, and if that's you, that's you. Go and do that, man. That, that's beautiful. And you can still debate and argue and say there's certain stupid ideas and certain stupid ideas. Like light snatches could be a stupid idea, right? It could definitely be a stupid idea. But in this moment, I feel and get something out of them. So I'm going to use that until I don't, until I really like, and a part of that's the belief factor too. It's like when I lose belief in light snatches or Will fully talks me out of doing light snatches, then 
I'll stop doing them and I won't have belief in them. But in the moment, like right now, it feels good and it's a good way to get volume and I enjoy doing it. And again, I think that's, that's an important part of training. Like, do you enjoy it? Um, do you feel like there's a purpose to what you're doing? And if there is, that's, you've probably got a good training program. You're probably getting good results from your training program and you leave that session feeling better about yourself than you went in, which is kind of a goal of training. You should leave feeling good about yourself. So let's get it. That position out right away. All right. Ooh, almost lost that. All right, one more set, then we get out of here. Well, we'll get to single. Huh. And on that last rant, honestly, I think Will is one of the best in the world at just stating the things he actually believes in and actually feels, regardless of what other people are saying. Like, I think he does one of the best jobs of filtering out bullshit and like filtering, not even bullshit, just filtering out the outside world. It's like the outside world's not there. He goes and does something, lives it and breathes it, and then says what he thinks about it, right or wrong, right? And I think he's one of the best in the world at it. And he really helps me have faith in like when I'm feeling something that not a lot of people are talking about or it sounds woo woo wee or it's not gonna get like the biggest following. He does one of the best jobs of like reaffirming in me. I just watch what he does and like the strength that he has and being able to call out bullshit that he thinks is bullshit or just saying things that are helpful for him that maybe go against the mainstream and that gives me faith. And I think that's a important job of an influence. I think that's why I struggle with Atlas, like defending knees over toes, because it's, he's another guy where it's like, that's a strong source in the fitness industry where people look to, to counter bullshit. And Will's a very great example of that as well. It's like you look at Will and you know the things that he's saying he actually believes in. He's not bought out. Um, nobody's like influencing his decisions. Obviously we're all influenced in some regards from everything around us, but he doesn't fall for that. And he does one of the best jobs of like, okay, I'm gonna go train, I'm gonna try all this stuff out and then actually say my results, not the, what I'm supposed to say. And then he had a post about like the, uh, what have you changed your mind about? And then people will literally just say, what everybody else has changed their mind about. And I, I fucking, I just love that rant. You guys have to go watch that video. I love that rant because it's so true. It's like, they're not even saying things that they've actually changed their mind about. It's like what the whole industry has changed their mind about. So now that person has changed their mind. It's like, what's your own individual critical thinking thought? Like, and what's your ability to, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, and what's your own ability and what are your own thoughts to be able to, can you go against Will and I, like we have rotational power, like can, can I say my thoughts on rotational power, can he say his thoughts on rotational power? And can we just say those thoughts and what we feel and what we're being exposed to? And then what idea survives from that, right? And a lot of times it's both ideas or there's a middle ground between ideas. Again, sometimes there's a lot of bullshit and you just have to call out the bullshit and fix the bullshit and you really have to go all the way over here. But a lot of times these two ideas are probably a lot closer than you think you can kind of go with them. But I just think, our field is just not very innovative. And I think we have set our field up in this weird way where innovation is really not rewarded. Like it's shit on. You try to go outside the box at all. You try to have a creative solution to a problem at all. And you have all these old fucking heads. You have these gatekeepers just like shitting on it constantly. And it just kills creativity. It kills like critical thinking to where most strength coaches are just a picture perfect carbon copy of the strength coach before them. And it's just a bunch. And I get a lot of the stuff in strength conditioning it's simple and it's like there's basics and all these things, but it's like, okay, but as a field, like we have all this bright, we have all these bright young minds. Like why are we not using this bright young mind to like work on some innovative thoughts or creative thoughts? And if the creative thought doesn't survive, which most creative thoughts don't, like that's just like most rappers don't, like their songs aren't hits, but the one rapper that did try something new and he is a, the M&Ms of the world, they explode and it's the next great idea. But I think a lot of our fields surrounded around killing innovation to keep the old gatekeepers and the old heads in place and the old meatheads that are kind of stuck there. And you, turn people off from going into this field, right? You turn, you turn the smartest people off, you turn the most creative people off from going into this field. So many times, like, I mean, I still feel it. It's like, I don't wanna be a part of this field. It's not a very thoughtful, creative kind of field. It's, it's a very like, you have to do it my way or the highway. And there's like four coaches that everybody steals all their stuff from and everybody kind of turns on a pendulum together rather than thinking for themselves. And obviously I'm guilty of that as well. Everybody's guilty of like having some sort of bias, but I just think Will is one of the best in the world at cutting out outside thoughts and just like trying it and then saying what he thought about trying it. And that's how you have a, an original thought. Like you actually go and live it. And then you put that thought out there rather than just sitting in this like, oh, that coach is saying something, that coach is saying something. Again, the the, the thought right now is to side with the knees over toes, right? That's the, that's the cool in thought that'll get you a bunch of praise from all these big coaches, right? 
that, that's not right. That's not an original thought, right? That's, that's just going with the masses, and I don't agree with that. So um, I think the more original thoughts you can have and just living and breathing things and then saying them, live and breathe them, and then say the thing, whether it's out there or not, and test that idea. Does that idea make any fucking sense to other people? Or was it just beneficial to you in the moment, or it felt good to you and your athletes in that moment? That's still a win. Then you put it out to the world and see what the world does with it. And if the world says, that's a stupid idea, here's why, you're like, oh yeah, you're probably right. The light snatches are a stupid idea. There's probably other things. Or you put it out there and like seven other people have thought the same thing, but they were too scared to say it. And again, that, that's the power of somebody like Will, and hopefully the power of somebody like me and what I try to do is like, you need strong people to help other people say the things that they just should say regardless, like strong sources. And the more those strong sources fall to the money and the more those strong sources fall to the masses, I think the less original ideas you get and the less creative thoughts you get, which just kills the field in and of itself. And again, you have all these really bright minds going in the other fields because it's not a sexy field to be in, which means unfortunately you get stuck with a lot of low IQ people in the field that are literally just gonna do the same things over and over again and our field stays the same. I think we can change that. I think we have enough brain power to change that in our field and we can uh, have some original ideas in our field. So let's do some light snatches. I'm gonna say that as this probably isn't a super light snatch for me from this position. Let's get it. Oh, Ooh, almost tipped there. Let's get to some single arm deadlifts and uh, maybe an ISO to finish and we'll get out of here. Let's hit uh, five reps, each arm here, um, three sets of five, call it good from there and uh, see how these feel. We're going to go straddle the bar today instead of uh, in front of it and uh, rip from here. Haven't done these in a while. Probably, I lied, we're gonna do an even number of sets, so either four or six, just so we hit one each arm, add weight in between each one. Um, but if we do three, I'll do two on my right, one on my left, that's kinda silly. But uh, second set here, let's get it. <coughs> Whee! Set number three here, we'll hit Let's say four sets. We'll hit four sets and then we'll hit a nice, so then we'll get out of here. We'll get some Chipotle today. Rip some of that. Let's go. Wee! Probably should put a clip on for next set. Let's keep ripping. All right, last set here. That's why you never talk shit that way, dude. My grip is totally fucking giving out here. All right, you got shit on here. That's that's that. <laughs> not a great rally speech there. Uh, we'll double hand deadlift this up. My grip is totally fucking giving out. Let's get it. Let's hit an ISO and not embarrass ourselves. We got two minutes on the clock. Ripping a little ISO here. Let's go. Oh, just hanging on in this bottom position. Here, pulling this front leg back, this back leg forward, scissoring in there. I want to feel that hamstring contract as I'm going in this position. And we're just hanging out here. Slow lowers, ISOs to recover, as Dak would say. So tomorrow we can hit absolute fucking nukes. That uh, deadlift was just, uh, I added 15 pounds to each side and it was a little too much for the grip. Um, Atlas talks about not using not using straps for the single arm deadlifts, I believe, in his book. Um, it is a cool book, even though we are beefing over. He's over toes. His book is really cool. Um, but not using straps because he's going to overload that bicep and that single arm pull. Um, so if I had a strap, I probably would have done it anyways. But um, why I wasn't using one, 
had nothing to do with that reason. I guess I'm lying, but uh, I was gonna try and say I was doing the right thing. Uh, if I had straps, I definitely would have sent that there on the straps, but my grip completely gave out there. It was tough. And I, I took like 10 minutes in between the two sets because I was uh, talking to Angus and DMs, um, bitching about knees over toe stuff. So I uh, had just not a great focus there. Should have had better focus, but um, I'm kind of just talking to get through this ISO because I'm fucking dying, but here we go. Hamstrings on fire, feeling those lunges from the other day. Again, I like, I just talked about this in a QA, and a but I like these isos, almost like a stretch position as well. Like, get a lot of good things out of here, but working that long length and lunge position, I think is money for a lot of athletes, especially a lot of squatty athletes like myself. <sighs> Oh, that's fun. All right, I'm gonna lower the camera and then hit the other leg, then we'll get out of here. Oh, I did a bunch of uh, calf raises yesterday. Uh, I was making, I was gonna make a video on how to develop athletic calves and just kind of show off the calves and just how stupid of an argument that was. But then uh, I decided I didn't want to deal with that. Uh, didn't even want to deal another day. Uh, arguing that shit. Some of that argument is, this shit is just draining, dude. Especially you just get a bunch of people in your comment section and uh, some of it's funny, some of it's trolling, but a lot of it just gets draining, dude. It's like you're not having a real conversation with anybody. You're not actually trying to change anybody's mind. It's just like uh, this dude, dude we, and it's always a couple repeat customers that are doing the same thing. It's like, what? They never have any post on their profile. Um, and if they do, it's, it's usually not a very good, it's like the post physique comment would absolutely work for these guys because um, it's, it's not a good physique. Um, but you just get a bunch of just trolls in there. Not even, they're not even actively trolling, but they have no value that they're bringing to the conversation. But yesterday I had the, the conversation with this dude and he was asking and I was like, dude, I made YouTube videos on it. Here's the YouTube videos. And that's been kind of, I've been trying to switch over to that response is just saying, hey, I have a video on this and if you, uh, if you want to uh, get a deeper in-depth response from me, don't go to the comments, let's go to the YouTube video. Um, that's not if I'm trying to not actively troll, but uh, I'll send them there. And I sent this guy to the YouTube thing. He's like, just explain it in the comments. I'm like, dude, like <laughs> that just tells me you're not a deep thinker. You're not actually looking for anything other than just to say what you already think. Um, because I have an hour long, I have a multiple hour long podcast and YouTube videos on the question that you want an answer of, I've created it. And the other thing is like, like, I don't think you should spoon feed people. Like, I think, uh, like an accountant wouldn't do your taxes for free. Why am I doing your work for free when I've made the video for you? Right? Like the video, the product is already out there. Um, and if you really want to deep dive into these things, oh my God, I'm dying. I'm just trying to talk to the talk. Oh, that was soft. Here we go. 15 seconds left. Um, if you really want to deep dive into some of these thought processes, you can sign up for a consult and we have a whole hour long conversation in the pursuit of truth. But just so many times on Instagram, it's just, it's not the pursuit of truth, dude. It's just, these people just want to say they don't have a voice in their regular life, which I have, oh, that stuff. Um, which I have empathy for. Like if you don't feel like you have a voice in your regular life, people aren't listening to you in your regular life, social media kind of becomes that outlet and you feel like you have to scream from the top of the mountain, especially when people aren't listening. And I get that aspect, but it's like, <laughs> it's not my responsibility to be your therapist. Uh, it's not my responsibility to help you feel seen on social media because you got angry about a tip raise post. Even like the, the, the Atlas one I posted, the one that this dude was getting pissed about, it's like, there was nothing edgy about it. Like it was just a poke at Atlas and the, the silly thing that he was saying. And Atlas responded great to it too. Like he was saying the same stuff as before, but it was like, he didn't get butthurt about it. Why are you getting butthurt about tip races, dude? This dude didn't even have ATG level one coaching his thing. And I didn't even come at ATG in it at all. I literally just came at how do you grow bigger calves? And I was saying you should probably do calf races, not shin races, but um, yeah. I don't know, I just think a lot of people, um, they feel stuck, they feel not seen, they feel not heard, and then social media becomes the only time they feel not seen and not heard, uh, which is insanity, because if you wanna be seen and heard, like, become worth being seen and become worth being heard, right? Like, uh, there's time periods in every man's life, and I'm gonna speak on males specifically, because I'm not a female, but it's like, if you're not being heard and you're not being looked at, you're not, you don't feel seen, you don't feel listened to, it's probably because you don't have a ton to say. Uh, and it's probably because you're not worth an at. It's probably because uh, people aren't following you because you're not worth following. No other reason. There's small stuff, everything like that. But become a man worth listening to. 
Become a man worth looking to. Become a man worth following and go on the hero's journey to develop those things. You don't just get that because you commented on somebody's Instagram post, right? And uh, if, you do, if you did feel seen and you did feel heard, you wouldn't feel that need to get that out of Instagram sections, especially if it's constant. It's, it's so many people are just, it's just the same people. Like, I, I have two or three people in my comment section that just sit and argue with other people in my comment section. It's not even me. It's like, I'm not even a part of that conversation. I want to be a part of that conversation by kind of like being a fly on the wall. But it's like, I just, I just feel like people have this big, I don't know if, it, if they don't realize it or what, but they feel, everybody feels the need to be seen and heard. And I, I'm compassionate towards that. But it's like, the solution is not just to listen and look at everybody, right? It's to tell them, hey, you're not being seen and heard because you're not worth being seen and heard. Your opinions are not very smart opinions. Uh, you're not living a life worth looking at. You're not living a life worth following. And the more we just give those people voices that haven't earned the voice yet, um, and we're not in the process of earning it, right? Like I, I think I'm probably in the, the mid tier, right? Like where some people are listening, most people are not listening. I have to level up multiple, multiple levels to get to where I want to. And, and that is a good thing, man. That means I have to clean up my life. That means I need to clean up my ability to speak. It needs to, I need to become something worth following, somebody worth following. That's a hero's journey. That should be a beautiful thing we should push in our society, but instead we don't. It's like we should listen to every, no. When I wasn't worth listening, being listened to, or being followed or anything, I didn't react in the comment section. I put out comments and I read a bunch of books and I worked a bunch to hopefully become somebody that was worth listening to and worth following and worth being seen and heard by, right? Um, and again, th th I have so many levels to go to get to where I want to get to. And uh, that's an amazing journey for myself and that helps my life tremendously. What wouldn't help my life is just people following me for the sake of following me or people listening to me for the sake of listening to me when I didn't deserve to be listened to. It's, it, it should be a wake up call. If you feel the need to be seen in comment sections, that tells me we need to clean up your life a little bit and you need to, you need to be seen in other places in your life uh, rather than an Instagram comment section where you're arguing for crazy things. Um, so just a little rant kind of ruffled the feathers rants today and feel pretty passionate, feel like I was able to talk. There wasn't a ton of people here today, so I was, I was better at speaking. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't take any of this as seriously as I feel like I come off. Uh, my goal is to hit softballs really, really far. So I don't mean to piss everybody off. I don't mean to be a dickhead. I just get passionate about these subjects and then I want to share that passion um, in the rants. And I feel like when I am passionate about it, uh, the thoughts come out much better, but whether they make sense or not, that, that's uh, left to be seen. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, my goal is just to hit softballs and to push back and allow people a space and hopefully be other people's will. Like Will and like Jake is another good example. But those are two very good people that have helped me be strong and showed me that it's doable to be a strong person in the field that says things that they believe in and then stands and backs up the things they believe in and doesn't bow. Um, and I think those people are important. And when you have passion around a subject, you should say that passion. You should say the things that you actually think and come up with these original, creative, individualistic ideas and then back them up and go to battle with those ideas. And that doesn't mean you have to, it needs to consume your life. Like I'm gonna shut this video off, I'm gonna go eat Chipotle and I'm gonna finish up the Hunger Games movie and, and then go play a shitload of softball tomorrow. Like it doesn't consume my life, it doesn't like ruin my sleep or anything like that. Like I, I, as soon as I shut the camera off, the camera shut off and I'm okay with this stuff. But uh, I do think there is value in being a strong person, becoming a strong person, standing on your opinions, backing your opinions up. And I don't think holding hands with people um, really helps in any regard. I think that shows people that it's okay to be weak. It shows people that it's okay to not stand on your ideas. And there's, there's too many of those people already. Uh, there's too many people that their compassion takes over their actual brain and logistics and they want to care for people. And that, that's one of the things that drives me insane about people that prey on compassionate people. They, they pray like ATGers, I guarantee most ATGers, if they were to take a test, they're high in compassion, high in compassion. And uh, I think people take advantage of that. And uh, very influenceable people are typically very compassionate people and they care and see things from uh, the other side. Um, but those people need somebody that is strong that will stand up for them. And I think if you are one of those people and you have that passion in your heart, 
um, that you should speak on those things and you should say that for the compassionate people, for the actual good people in the world. I think it would be much better just to be a more compassionate person myself. Um, but uh, it's really not a skill set that I was dealt um, and it's not something that I'm not working on. I'm definitely working on and seeing from other people's perspective. But again, if you look at what somebody like me was put here to do, is hopefully be a warrior that stands up as, as cringy as that is. It's like be a warrior that stands up to the people that pray on the compassionate people, uh, the, the prey, the wolves that prey on the sheep, right? And I don't even think sheep is a bad thing. Like, and I think it's it's much better to just be a compassionate, loving person that like thinks that people are good. Um, but if you don't see the bad and you don't understand the bad, that bad kind of grows and kind of takes over. And um, there needs to be few strong individuals that stand up against some of the bad, regardless of the consequences, and um, have enough faith in that. So I don't really know where that whole rant was going, but hopefully there was something good there. I appreciate you guys watching, um, and I'm proud. We got five days of videos done in a row, um, and I think it was high-quality content this week, and hopefully next week we keep cooking. But yeah, I'm kind of proud of that myself. Um, so many times I thought I wasn't going to get a video done this week, and I wasn't soft, and I wasn't a little bitch this week, regardless of the video was super long or super short. Uh, I got in here, and I recorded, and that's a win for me this week. So let's fucking go. Let's keep that going into next week, and let's hit some nukes tomorrow. Let's fucking do it. Hunger Games, I got like 10 minutes left. I fell asleep towards the end. Um, this last Hunger Games is absolute money. If you uh, are new to the Hunger Games series, I would watch it, dude. I've read the first two books, but the last two movies, I have not read those books, and I've been sitting there on the edge of my seat eating it up. So let's go do that. I'm going to eat some Chipotle and get some Hunger Games. Keep chopping wood. Let's go.